Competition changes people. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and you probably know that I like space available travel for a bunch of reasons. And one of the big ones is because of the cohesion that it brings your family together with. But I also like it because it captures many of the dynamics of a bureaucratic environment. There's a resource, the seats on the flights, that people are willing to compete for. And there's rules to make that distribution process justifiable, if not fair. And one of the interesting things about space A travel is how relationships evolve throughout the process. When you first sign up, you don't see the people you're competing against. But when you show up to the terminal to check in and be marked present, there is a wary watchfulness among your fellow travelers. People are running estimates in their heads to figure out the probability that they're going to get a seat. People tend to be cheerful towards folks who are a lower category or signed up after them. And they're not outwardly hostile towards people who signed up before them. They just have this feeling of disappointment as more and more people get in line ahead of them. And so during that time between check-in and roll call, the general sentiment seems to be, I hope you get a flight as long as I get a flight. People don't actually say that. They just think it. And because the seats are distributed by a system of rules, people tend to be nice. They help each other, kids play together, they chat, gossip, and then there's roll call. And that is going to separate the haves from the have-nots. In fact, sometimes they run you straight from roll call through security, and the people who got selected never see the people who didn't get selected again. The completion of roll call tends to cause a general uptick in camaraderie on both sides of security. The people flying are now all in this together. They can chat and gossip about maintenance delays all they like. And the people not flying can start reassessing their options. There might be some carping about seats, but generally the folks flying are just weary travelers who are all in the same strange adventure. But that does not last forever. There comes a moment when all those allies suddenly turn into adversaries, competing for a whole new set of resources. And for the first time space A traveler, that's usually a shock. This transition happens the moment you touch down at your destination passenger terminal. The minute that plane is on the ground, the competition for seats is irrelevant. Now people are going to compete for lodging, taxis, and rental cars. And to be fair, not everybody on your plane is going to care about those resources. Some folks are on a mission, so they get met by members of their unit. Others are PCSing, so they're going to get met by their sponsors. Even some folks who are just traveling will be met by the friends that they're coming to visit. But if you travel like I do, you're going to be part of that group of people who have to act quickly to get what they need. So here's how my family approaches it. We divide and conquer. My wife and kids head to the luggage carousel, and I head to the customs with just my carry-on. My goal is to be one of the first people through customs so that I can get a taxi before they're all gone, or at least call one and get it on the way while I wait for my family. Now, what I really want is a rental car, and you might ask why I'm being so antsy when I could just reserve one. That is part of a bigger conversation, but suffice it to say, I have never had good luck reserving a rental car internationally. Being physically present has always worked best. But hopefully you can see how your relationship with your fellow travelers shifts and evolves as you move through this process. And like in so many bureaucratic settings, yesterday's ally is today's adversary is tomorrow's ally. So it pays to be professional and polite at all times. And if you want to see how to plan your trip so that you can deal with the inevitable hiccups, watch this video.